the legends say, after creating Super Mario 12, wait, no, no, hang, hang on, it was Super Mario 17! Well, after doing that, he had to do it, he just had to go there, Shiggy had to owe those words to the Fire Emblem developers. A good game is good, but a bad game? Is bad. You know what the gentleman over at Intelligent Systems said? Shut up, Miyamo. We're making sexy chess. But then, sexy chess 12 finishes. Hmm. What now? You see, the next step was obviously codenamed Steam. Obviously, it's just what you do. The game was universally praised on reveal, and there was a mountain of hype piling up, little by little. By little, how did that pan out? How, well, I'll stop being sarcastic and say a codename Steam is a good game and then genuinely worth your time. See, see, I have restraint. A strategy game, but it's in third person, but it's also a shooter, but it advances arthritis. Yeah, well, I bought this game brand new for £2.49 in 2021. It came out in 2015, so clearly it must have bombed hard. While they never revealed overall sales figures, we know it sold 30,000 in its first month in the USA. And from the charts they released in the later years, a codename Steam wasn't even found to have reached a million. That's not great, and they must have made way too many copies, to the point that new versions were still hanging around seven years later. It goes without saying that that isn't too common with a first party Nintendo game. Maybe Nintendo expected did it to do better, but I don't remember it even being marketed very much at the time. It, it's like the very idea of the game pissed the whole company off. But why did it do real? This was a perfect ringer for success on the 3DS, right? A Nintendo published game from the developers of Fire Emblem Awakening, the game that moved more copies than Sonic Extreme and Mega Man Universe combined, single-handedly revitalizing the franchise in the West, increasing the audience tenfold. They made hundreds of fans with that game. Yeah, those guys making a fresh, unknown IP that no one has heard of before, with 18 different control schemes caring to a niche audience, smashing up different genres to become even more of a niche on a platform that already isn't the most interested in strategy games having the name of an experimental kitchen appliance, barely pushing the marketing. It's, 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 a, it's a mystery. It's a mystery. However, unlike Fire Emblem, which was also made by Intelligent Systems, it bombed and didn't get 42 chances to succeed. Sorry, 41. So far, at least, they've kind of just left the IP to rot. But what the hell even is rowing? Huh. Let's beep this out. The gameplay works by utilizing the namesake a backpack of limited steam. This is also the energy that determines your ability to move and shoot within each stage. You need to destroy illegal aliens who step into your country. Now, as we know, aliens do travel in single file, so reinforcements coming back in one by one are gonna be an issue no matter how many you've taken out, generally. Move one character to the end goal area without dying, you're a winner. Sometimes your missions change and evolve as going the Queen of England. Coins you find in the level let you save the game mid-mission, doubling as a refill for your character or everyone's steam. This is so useful, it, it feels like I'm cheating. You can use all of your turns up and then just do even more to the enemy by having more steam from these save areas. Take a new position or grab a life-changing, radical, cool, tubular collect collectible as a, uh, so there's five of them usually, so that's a, uh, you know, it's a, it's a, a neat incentive. Each character is entitled to an ultimate, and unsurprisingly, game developers just keep copying Overwatch. <laughs> Kidding, Overwatch was an owl at this point, so they copied Super Smash Bros. Brawl. Ultimates are a big help in turning the tide, while not whittling the strategy down to pressing a win button. Each character brings something different to the table, and playing to each of these guys' strengths is kind of crucial to being able to move around the map in succession. I'll admit, I'm not the big strategy game guy, I mean, I don't calculate my attack chance on breathing, and I'm, I'm pretty confident in my ability. So I'm not sure how special Codename Steam is to other strategy games. 
levels in your survival can get so intense and it's easy to make a simple mistake like moving an enemy's sightlines or forgetting to take the stylus with you in the toilet, forcing you to use the game's base controls. Let's talk about that, it's uh, it's weird, but also cool that you have different choices. The stylus being the most optimal by far, the camera is a major factor to take in. And if you don't have the new knobs, you need to cope with what they give. You have to cope with the most optimal control scheme. It takes time to get used to this whole scheme. I write not feeling good in the first hour. It is unusual after all, but after you play and get used to it, it complements the gameplay perfectly and using an Xbox controller or mouse just wouldn't feel the same. The whole framework is so well made. It's a jolly time executing aliens, always planning out my next moves, laying waste to the country's enemies, just moving forward to see new layouts and what I get to do next. Having the choice between movement or shooting and not being able to always do both depending on how you manage your energy is a really interesting twist that totally adds to the game's aesthetic. Because oh, the 1800 steampunk aesthetic is absolutely clean and the old timey guns in this game are really satisfying to shoot. Seeing a horde of aliens just blow up, unloading on them completely, highlighting these moments in such a way just makes the process even more worth it. How I could play XCOM, but I could also just be a racist. Hey, Lincoln, yeah, he freed the slaves. Yeah, you might have heard of him. All right, come on. He never saw the slayer on, on, pur on purpose or, or, or accident. The American war didn't actually happen in this world, I, I think. England and America are still allies, and in this timeline, aliens decided to invade. See how we dodged a bullet there? Unfortunately, it seems CNS had a very slightly lukewarm reception. So I looked into impressions from around the game's release and found a few interesting things. It didn't have a fast forward feature at launch, and apparently there were problems with loading and a choppy frame rate that made gameplay just a bit more of a chore. Thinking about it, I, I would feel the same way if there was no fast forward. The most common thing that I've seen are uh, people not really impressed by what it was tried to go for. Austria complains that it's an average, bland strategy game. Poopy faces. All the controls being hard to get used to. That That is a legitimate issue. Lots of people are dismissive of a game if it doesn't immediately click. They want their time savoured. Well, they did update the game, so at least now I would go ahead and say Codename Steam is genuinely great. Satisfying payoffs to long waits and long stretches of did I, did I make the right move? And then being blasted away is what hooked me here. It's just different somehow. With the various map designs providing verticality with exploration and the characters that serve continuously useful purposes to warrant even swapping, there is enough variety here to keep the core gameplay from getting too stale. I will admit that Codename Steam doesn't have that much depth or a gripping story like Fire Emblem, but it's a 3DS game. For the platform, it more than fits those portable play sessions. For the insanely low price you can currently find it at, uh, th there's no reason not to have it. If you like strategy games, or if you're not familiar with them, or if you like not being familiar with anything, it's a good buy. Alright, next up is uh, 